Welcome back to the channel. I'm Osborne Foreman and today I'm going to be doing a stock analysis. This is actually on my biggest current holding in the portfolio in which I roughly hold over 4 thousand shares. This stock is Boohoo and I'm hoping to restart the stock analysis series although with a few changes. I figure I'd start with some of my more popular holdings so that then I can link you back to this video and then you know exactly what my opinion is on Boohoo and then in the portfolio updates I'll just give you a general gist update as the news items come out. Hopefully it becomes a more streamlined process and if you like the changes that are happening to the channel please drop one of these to help beat that YouTube algorithm and the support is much appreciated. So I will let you know I am changing the stock analysis series. So this will be a demonstration video. This is exactly what I plan to do in each video but I'm going to make it paid request. This means the videos will be completely public however a viewer can choose their particular stock that they would like analyzed by myself. I'm likely going to add a few rules to this metric. It might be that it has to be UK listed like AIM and FTSE as well as US maybe NASDAQ and S&P and that if it seems as like an obvious pump and dump then I'm probably not going to cover it but it really depends on a case by case basis. As far as I know my initial plan right now is to give three of these slots. I'm going to have three slots, £15, that's the request. And then once you request a stock name, you'd also get a shout out at the start of the video. And then I will jump into it and give as much detail as possible. Although I'm already at an advantage with Boohoo because I know this stock very well. And so my opinion is likely going to be a lot more formulated and a lot more prepared, especially because at the moment I do not have a script. So when we jump onto the likes of simply Wall Street, we can see that Boohoo in the last year has done awful. In fact, you'll likely see the title and see that shares are down probably near 50%. Boohoo has had a massive drop and this is due to their most recent earnings. They've definitely had a lower side revenue expectations. They were previously in the last five years having phenomenal earnings growth which I will show you on the past performance. We can see here that look revenue and earnings has been on a very strong growth. Admittedly, revenue has been compounding a lot faster than the likes of earnings, and it does seem like earnings are just about growing with revenue, but they're not growing faster. What we can see is that in the last five years, the earnings growth on average is a CAGR, compound annual growth rate, is 28%. That means 28% on average growth each year of their earnings, and that is very impressive. And in fact, I believe their CAGR of their revenue was roughly 38% for the last five years, which is even higher. And then they made their guidance recently, uh, about four, three or four months ago, suggesting that actually they're going to be targeting 20 to 25% growth. Actually, I believe it was more of 25% revenue growth. And then the most recent results, they only had 20% revenue growth, although they didn't show any like for like growth. So we can't see if there are any particular brands holding it down, or we can't really see the demographics and which is particularly doing well. So there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment that is very much impacting investor sentiment. And when we look at the valuation, please realize that Simply Wall Street is about a day out of date. So I recorded this on Wednesday night, but the information will relate to Tuesday. It says the current share price is about two pound four pence. I disregard the share price versus fair, fair value. I think sometimes it's very off. This seems a little bit more accurate, but I'm not interested in that. What I am interested in is the price to book ratio, which is really starting to come down into line with the industry. This could suggest that it's at a fair value. And usually for growth stocks, typically you would pay a premium for the amount of growth they're going to provide as they are growing their financials and underlying uh, fundamentals faster than other companies in the markets. And so sometimes they justify a steady premium. I think the price to earnings ratio is out of date. I reckon it's going to be a lot lower than 43 times, but because it's a trailing 12 month price to earnings ratio, it's certainly gonna look like it is still very high. What I am interested in though is the financial health. Financial health of the business is a very important metric because you can see however they will survive a tough situation. If they did, for instance, have a lack of earnings, would they go into a lot of debt and go bankrupt or will they be able to survive? We can see that they have got a lot more short-term liabilities now and we can see on the debt to equity history and analysis that yes, they have gone from 0% debt to now having 10.4% debt. However, when we look at their cash position, this is very strong and they have 98 million pounds of net cash. Although admittedly it has decreased from about 344 million pounds of net cash, I think with the recent pandemic and uh, modifications they've made to their business, I think this is very relevant. In fact, they had their, um, 
they were going to be uh, spending a lot of money in the UK and investing 500 million pounds to improve their warehouse capacity and uh, create up to 5,000 new jobs. So they are certainly investing this cash, especially when we consider the things like other brands. We've been seeing the four big brands that they've acquired from the fall of Arcadia, such as Debenhams, Dorothy Perkins, Burton and Wallace. These brands may take a little while to grow. Sure, you buy the brand for its already well-known brand awareness but they may need to spend a bit in marketing to really push the growth of these companies up. After all, they were likely stagnating, maybe even declining with the fall of Arcadia. And so there is certainly odds against Boohoo to get these ones back on track. Another interesting thing to look at is obviously they don't pay a dividend, but the management. The management is very interesting. John Little was the former CEO of Primark. Primark is whole or owned by Associated British Foods. So if you're wondering why there isn't a listing for Primark, it's under that. But he is a very well-spoken uh, person. He is very good for the company. And I think at the moment, the only real downsides of John Little being in the company are the fact of that bonus that he would be deemed to receive if the company hits roughly a six billion pound market cap. It might even be 7.5 billion pounds market cap, which at the moment would be a two to three times prior valuation on the current share price. Regardless, what I do want to see is the ownership and what we can see is that for some reason they've, um, they have done this, the individual insiders hold 19.7% of the overall share pool. This suggests significant skin in the game. We've got Kamani holding a very large chunk. We have actually a lot of their family holding that. We do have some institutions like Jupiter Fund Management really holding close to 10% as well, which may be their limit. And we've also got other things like um, Carol Kane, which is the other co-founder uh, co -founder that holds 2.63%. A good article I'd like to show you is The Makings of a Multibagger. This was created in summer 2020. And this was basically what kind of stocks had done very well in Western Europe, the US, and I believe Australia they looked for the common trends between them and made a sufficient analysis. And if you'd like to sign up to my stockbroker free trade, you can actually get a free share worth up to 200 pounds when you use my link in the description down below and sign up. So on the makings of a multi-bagger, we can see that their five-year TSR, at least at summer 2020, was 1,000, 1,320%, making it rank 14 out of 104. Regardless, we're more interested in the rest of it. We can see that they are currently retailing clothes. We know that already. Let's just skip a bit beyond this. What we can see is their broad business model. We can see that they are targeting 16 to 40 year olds. And yes, they have bought the likes of Debenhams and some other brands, which are certainly going to wider that demographic. But what is interesting is their sales by geography. And of course, this is going to be very much out of date because prior to the last trading update, I believe they had revenue growth in the US of 59% and revenue growth in the UK of 41%. So this obviously is going to be vastly different and the proportion I would imagine would be slightly more tilted towards US, although a majority in the UK, and then the rest of Europe and the rest of the world slowing down a bit and having a lower, lower chunk of it. However, the issue with this, for instance, in their competitive analysis is that, yeah, there's a high threat because there really isn't barriers to entry in this industry. It's cheap clothing. You don't really need that much capital to really get a business like this started. But the idea is, is that Boohoo, as they scale and get bigger in size, they're going to outcompete the other competitors in the industry by building a large moat because they're able to do their test and supply business model, which means they have factories in the UK and Leicester that make the products, they then see how well they sell, and if they're selling very well, they'll ship more from abroad. This is a very much advantaged business model and certainly means that it does make it tougher for other competitors to try and claw up market share. See that there are some risks in regard to the likes of not keeping up with trends. If they do fail to keep up with these trends, then obviously, yeah, Boohoo's sales are not going to do very well. At the moment, they're not really focused on the short-term profits. They're investing in the warehouses, investing in capacity. So hopefully, we're looking at some good long-term growth potential. Although this could be exactly the wrong move to be making if, for instance, their demand continues to decline and they do certainly struggle. 
What is interesting is that they have made some key acquisitions. The bare thesis in 2015 is that they were only exclusive online. They were only operating online. Now I would see that as an advantage, although I have seen some stores in the high street do very well. Uh, Uniqlo makes a very good balance between this. They are also another fashion competitor. They aim for the more basic product line and they are more or less based in Asia, or I believe at least that's where their business originated. And they do have quite a big audience of people that would go into the shops and buy. I've been checking in my local town where I'm working at the moment and it is certainly driving some popularity. They say Boohoo is an okay business. I disagree with that. I think at the moment they have got their struggles with their ESG. I do think this is an addressing concern for the future, but it puts them ahead of the game because they were the business that was signaled out for the ESG concerns. Therefore, with that, they've invested a lot of money into their agenda for change, appointed the likes of Sir Brian Levison, and that they're going to really try and provide their supplier audit list or at least the ones they have available at all times, that's adding to another level of transparency. What I would love to see is if that perhaps they look for more vertical integration and they went, you know what, actually we're gonna manufacture our own factories. And they, had, they did invest in their own exemplar factory that they were going to create to set the standards in the industry. So that could certainly give us a hint of what may come in the future. And if they did make it vertically integrated, they could completely control their own supply chain, at least in the UK, and then they could really uh, rank, uh, push up the profit margins. Why Boohoo may be crashing. And at the moment, the price of cotton is at all time highs. Well, no, sorry, highs in the last decade. This is certainly a concern because obviously their profit margins are going to be stretched even further. We have the disadvantages of the pandemic leading to higher freighting costs. We're seeing a rise in the price of cotton. And so it makes sense why in their results that they said that their EBITDA, which is their earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, basically their overall profits uh, before taxes and that, is going to decrease. Usually it's about nine to 10% and that was their guidance for the, the, this financial year. However, they've had to lower that and I believe they've lowered that to 8.5 to 9% and I think investors don't quite believe that. They believe that it may continue to lower over the short to medium term, although that's exactly it. I think this is only a concern in the short to medium term. As they're investing more in the UK, they have more accessibility to growth in the UK. I've even, I believe, heard of the ideas that they are investing in factories or looking towards investing, or this could be speculation, in factories and warehouses and capacity in the US. These are their two core growth markets. If they can get these under control, they're in a very good position that kind of outweighs the whole freighting costs. Sure, they're going to have external suppliers in other parts of the world where labor is cheaper, but using their test and supply business model, they could certainly uh, provoke their factories that are more local to only produce the popular clothing and then make sure that they're constantly generating sales. And don't forget, Boohoo is a, a kind of fashion company that will sell a product and then they'll take it out of circulation and then they'll sell something new. They try to keep up with the trends and they do so pretty well in my opinion, but it does mean that sometimes the clothing changes. And so it would be natural for some items to suddenly come out of stock and no longer be sold, which they'll, or they'll put the rest of them on sale and push for the better or the more bought items. An analyst, Paul Hill, someone who is notably quite bullish on Boohoo, has summarized some very good points. He believes that CEO John Little is pursuing exactly the right strategy, and I also agree. They're investing not only in sustainable growth, uh, basically being brand recognition, sales and marketing, geographic expansion, and selective mergers and acquisitions, but also supply chain excellence. This is that improvement of the supply chain that they're making through their agenda for change. And this puts them very much ahead of the competition. They're also looking at warehouse expansion and automation rather than chasing those short-term profits. And then he also goes to say that this is how Jeff Bezos at Amazon managed to build a $1.6 trillion behemoth over the last 25 years. And we can see that Boohoo in the last two years has doubled their market shares in the UK and US. This is very strong. Sure, they've got net cash of 98.4 million, and yes, that is less than what it was earlier in the year. And as he mentions as well, that margins are lower on EBITDA, but this is expected due to the freight, warehousing, and personnel. Obviously, they've hired more staff, inflation's going up, wages are somewhat following this trend, so it's likely going to be quite capital intensive for the moment. And at the moment it sees, and with these calculations, this is very interesting. They, uh, 
recommend H2 guidance remaining at 20 to 30% per PA revenue growth. And this would deliver roughly 9.3 to 9.8 EBITDA margins. However, they're looking for 25% revenue CAGR, meaning each year try and grow their revenue by 25% and 10% margins. But when doing the calculations that Paul Hill has done, he believes that Boohoo could lift turnover to about 5 billion, which would be a 19% CAGR of their revenue over the next five years, which basically on a 20 times EBITDA multiple, Amazon is at 21 times for the full year of 22, using this 10.5% margin, which is a little bit higher than what they're saying, um, basically it would generate a hypothetical 10.5 billion pound valuation which would push the shares up to roughly 825 pence per share, which would be a massive rise in the shares and certainly a very strong gain if you were to invest in them. So what am I doing with my shares? I'm currently buying with dip. I'm trying to be, trying to be careful because I've always had a plan and I need to really say that the reason I've had a plan is because I follow the teachings in The Art of Execution by Lee Freeman Shaw, how the world's greatest investors have managed to make millions despite losing most of the time and turning over a loss in a lot of their investments. It's because they had a plan and stuck to it. If you're interested in reading this book, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. It's one of my favorite books and I think it is my favorite book of 2021. But it highlights the importance of having a plan. I had a plan for Boohoo, it's one of my highest conviction stocks. When the share's gone below my average, I'm looking to buy more. However, I'm not gonna repeat the same mistake I made with Argo Blockchain. I'm not gonna put too much capital at all in too early. Instead, I'm gonna consistently deposit small sums, well, larger sums than my regular deposits, but just keep averaging down on each time that it is that the shares are down. Slowly accumulate, build up my position, lower my average price so that I am well positioned for long-term returns, which I do believe because I don't think the story has changed. And that whilst their guidance is a little bit lower of 25% CAGR of their revenue, I do think that over the longer term, they will certainly do well. At the moment, my average price is roughly around £2.50 per share. However, the longer shares are down, the more time I get to accumulate more and benefit. I do believe that we may see some director buyers, although they may be prevented from doing so per, due to some information they may already hold. But if we see a director buy, this could certainly push shares back up. And personally, I wouldn't want to see it. We can also see the likes of the ESG funds potentially buying back in because the company they sold before due to ESG concerns has now rapidly improved, doing much better with ESG, and then maybe they could buy back in now and that could certainly push prices up. I do find it a bit odd that Boohoo shares have dropped quite dramatically with no real sign of any recovery just yet, but I'm hopeful, I'm bullish over the longer term and the short term volatility really doesn't impact me. And so I'm gonna continue buying, as I mentioned, lower that average, try and get it down to about £2.25 per share and really have a good, strong core position in Boohoo. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below if you would like to make a video request for stock analysis. Obviously, the lesser known the company is or the harder it is to research, the video may be altered, it may be different. But at least on this one, I didn't really need a script because obviously I hold Boohoo and I'm very much bullish on them and I already know the real talking points to really look at. All of the websites I've looked at today will also be in the link in the description down below so you can check them out, especially obviously as you may be interested in the makings of a multi-bagger as they do have some other stocks that I actually personally hold in my portfolio. And if you'd like to see my free UK stocks to buy this month, then click the card at the top right of the video. Thank you for watching. I'm Osman Foreman. Have a fantastic day.